Hello and welcome. There is a strange anomaly that's been known for decades. Nearly all of the S&P 500 returns come overnight. You buy the clothes, go to sleep and by the next morning you've made the money. Meanwhile, traders who actually sit in front of the screens all day, they basically break even. It always sounded a bit mythical, so let's test it from scratch. 30 years of SPY data, pure Python, no filters, no tricks. Let's see if that edge still exists and if it's fading like some people claim. First step, get clean data. I'm pulling SPY, the S&P 500 ETF, straight from Y Finance, starting in 1995 through 2025. Prices are dividend adjusted, so what we're looking at is total return, not just price changes. I'm also downloading the VIX, the volatility index, which we'll use later to see how this pattern behaves in corn versus volatile markets. For now, this is just basic market structure. One line per trading day with the open, high, low, close and volume. So let's take a look at this together, printing out SPY containing the S&P 500 daily data here. So you see close, high, low, open volume columns and daily data here. This is the raw input, no signal yet, no assumptions, just price history waiting to be split apart. And next, we'll turn prices into two distinct return streams. The first is overnight, from yesterday's close to today's open. That's a move that happens while the exchange is closed. The second is intraday, from today's open to today's close. The period most traders think of as, in quotation marks, the market. Then finally, the buy and hold return, that is just simply the total return of the S&P 500 on a daily basis. This split, so these two formulas, you have every day now a pair of numbers, one for what happened while the world slept and one for what happened while everyone was awake. In this case, it's obviously related to the US. This is the entire premise of the anomaly, splitting the same daily data into its two natural halves and letting the math tell the story. No indicators, no parameters. It's impossible to overfit this. It's just slicing the daily structure of returns. So let's execute that and take a quick look at how this is looking like. So for instance, the overnight series is looking like this. So you have an overnight return for every single day. Now, Let's see the results over three decades. You see here I'm just accumulating the returns. So I'm taking the series, add one to that, take the cumulative product that's just accumulating returns. And I'm doing that for the overnight, for the intraday return and for the buy and hold return. And with that, you're getting an equity curve, which you then can compare. And as you see, I'm giving some names here. So we are seeing what we want to see. So let's execute that and take a look at this striking chart together. So the blue line here is just the cumulative return if you only held the SPY overnight. Buying at the close, selling at the next day's open. The orange line here is intraday, holding only while the market is open. The green line then is the standard buy and hold, which is essentially the combination of both. And even today, if you take a look at this part of the chart, the picture is astonishingly consistent. Almost every dollar of return since 1995 came from the overnight session. The intraday line barely even moves. Decades of noise, no real compounding. But if you zoom into the last 10 years, you notice something subtle. The blue line still climbs, but much slower. The gap between overnight and intraday narrows. 
The effect is clearly still there, but not as dominant as it used to be. That's the first real insight. The anomaly persists, but it's evolving. To see that shift more clearly, because here you can barely see it, to be honest. But to see that shift more clearly, we'll just split the history into two periods. So this is what I'm doing here. So I'm taking two buckets, one from 1995 to 2015, and then one from 2015 to 2025. So with that, we see the split. Let's execute that and see what we're getting. So with that, we're getting two charged. 995 to 250, you see this clear overperformance of the overnight return versus the interday return. And then you see the pronounced narrowing of the overnight and intraday return here. Now, is this random? No. This is a totally different world. The overnight drift still exists, but it's way, way weaker, as you see. The intraday return, as you also see, is finally positive. This isn't random. It reflects how market microstructure has changed. For instance, more trading happens during the day now. Algorithmic execution, ETF flows, and for instance, macro releases during US hours. All that pushes activity into the session that used to be quiet. To summarize, the overnight edge didn't vanish because someone arbitraged it away. It faded because the game itself changed. One more thing worth checking is the risk. So maybe the overnight return just compensates for higher volatility. So what I'm doing here is I'm pulling the overnight series and intraday series Take a look at the standard deviation and annualize it. So the expectation here is that the overnight volatility is higher than the intraday volatility, but this clearly, as you see, isn't the case. The overnight volatility is way, way lower than the intraday volatility. Intraday returns are close to zero, but the volatility is higher. So what does this tell us? tells us this isn't a classic risk premium story. It's structural. It's about when investors prefer to hold exposure, not how risky that exposure is. And now finally, let's see what happens under different volatility regimes. So what I'm doing here is I'm grouping all trading days into tercels based on the VIX. So I have three regimens here, low, mid, high. That is just a volatility environment. And the result here is super interesting. Let me execute that. When the VIX is low, the overnight return is the strongest, as you see. When volatility rises, that is happening in this direction, the edge fades and in high volatility regimes, it almost disappears. And that is very nicely fitting the behavioral interpretation. So investors are comfortable holding risk overnight only when the world feels calm. In stress markets, they pull back and the effect vanishes. Wrapping it up, the overnight drift probably came from how information used to hit the market. Back then, most news and earnings dropped after hours and prices adjusted before the open. But that's not really the case anymore. Trading is almost non-stop. A lot of macro data comes out during US hours and ETFs keep liquidity flowing all day. The market basically moved from having a daily rhythm to running on a constant pulse. And that shift seems to have watered down the overnight edge rather than killed it completely. It's still there, as we saw, just much smaller. Probably not really a tradable edge, more like a glimpse into how markets quietly evolve over time. I hope you found this interesting. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And I thank you very much for watching and I'm looking forward to seeing you in our upcoming videos. Cheers. Bye-bye.